Bingo, streetcars to the fair. There was a service to the state fair starting in 1891, but it really took off in 1904 when the Como Interurban, meaning the Como Harriet line between downtown Minneapolis and downtown St. Paul was opened. And then also a year later, uh, like 1905, the Snelling Avenue line opened. So now you, you can get to it from three different directions. So anyway, um, the first two slides here show the State Fair Terminal. Uh, now, now they're a little different from each other, but they show the State Fair Terminal supposedly as originally designed. And, and you had a St. Paul loop and you had a Minneapolis loop and here's Como Avenue called Langford Avenue at the time down there. Now, there was a problem with this. Um, you'll notice that all the sidings are facing north. And so let's say you were a Minneapolis car and you came in and you let your people off probably right about here. The idea was that you would go around and you would back into the siding and then you would come back around to load. Well, in St. Paul, they, they couldn't seem to kind of figure that out. You had to go there, but then you'll notice that the track takes you out. You can't come back. So that was obviously kind of a bad deal. Well, here's another version of it that also showed up. And this is a little different, but once again, the sidings are north. So you'd come in and you had to come down here and back up into a siding. And then once again, you could come around once again with St. Paul, you couldn't, you couldn't get there anymore. And I think they decided that uh, the way they had the sightings was just all wrong. Um, by the way, it's kind of interesting. You got newspaper row here. This is the women's building um, and big exhibition barns. So anyway, uh, it, two years later in like 1907, they tore this thing up and they reoriented the sidings. Now this is out of Russ Olson's book. And the sidings now you'll notice are going the other way completely. And uh, the other thing that happens is now everybody who exits the St. Paul can come back. The other thing that they did is because before, if you went all the way around, you, you, you could un now you could unload and you could back directly down into a siding. You didn't have to go all the way around the loop if you didn't want to. Uh, thus tying up traffic on Como Avenue. The other thing they did is they created an entrance to one of these, both on the St. Paul and the Minneapolis loop. So there apparently the St. Paul one was done away with later. And you know what I think this was for? I think this was for when you had pullouts from the station to start service and they could come in and go right into a ready track here to be ready to, to come up and board. So anyway, it's kind of interesting. The other thing, and I'll show you slides at the end of this. Um, this was one of uh, two or three company gravel pits across the street. Um, today it's just a big parking lot, but it was a gravel pit and uh, you almost never see a picture of it. Well, I'll wind up showing you a couple. During the fair, they must have had switchmen to help the cars move around. They, did, they, the had, they had switchmen out in the street that were manually turning these switches. Aaron, do you know if any of these three match what's on the, the floor of the History Center now at the State Fair? Because they have a graphic. Oh, I, I have to go look at it. I haven't seen it. I, I wasn't aware of that. Thank you. When I go this year, and I will, I will take my corn dog over and take a look at it. <laughs> so here's an aerial view. And it's kind of hard to see because the tracks were were... Uh, there was grass all in the tracks, so they're a little bit hard to see. But if you look closely, you can see the St. Paul Loop and the Minneapolis Loop here. And then the other thing that they added, and this apparently indicates that a ridership to Minneapolis was heavier than the St. Paul, is they created this big waiting shelter. Uh, and this is where you boarded to go back to Minneapolis. But you didn't apparently board to go back to St. Paul from there, although, although you could. However, they had to be in the Minneapolis loop to go to, to, to go there. And off here, by the way, these are the railroad spurs where they bring in the Royal American shows. Oh, sure. And here the Hippodrome is under uh, construction. Okay, now we have a series of views from Langford Avenue, now Como Avenue, um, showing, looking towards the grandstand and at different points in history. 
So this is sometime probably around 1910 or something like that. Um, I am always amused by what was going to happen at the grandstand. War of Nations tonight. <laughs> um, and by the way, they still use these big these big letters for a grandstand show. They're up there today. So here's another old Mexico tonight spectacle. And uh, they got a water wagon here. They always put a work car or two uh, uh, here in case something went bad. And this, I ran this photo in Twin City Lines. This is car 1267 over here, the one that's at Seashore now. Hmm. And let me just back up here. And here you can actually see this is the spur going into the gravel pit. Okay, now here we are, I wanna say maybe 1918 or so, 1920. Uh, there's a couple of overhead wire trucks right here. Um, and what looks like kind of a food wagon of some kind. And uh, this, by the way, this is Rome under Nero tonight. So it was a spectacle, Rome was going to burn. Um, and now here it was um, towards the end, like probably 1952 or so, because 52 was the last year that uh, cars went to St. Paul. And does it say something up there? I don't see something up there on, on this one. Okay, um, so here we are. I actually ran this one in a, uh, this shows that you'll see a bunch of pictures of this big rambling wood shelter. And this was uh, the station, and this was the entryway right up, right up here. So here, this is pretty early. This is about 1903 or so. And you still got a couple of uh, three of the open cars, as well as the, uh, the old woodies. Plus you can tell these guys have brass hat badges on. So you know it's, it's earlier. Um, here you are looking east over the yard towards the horticulture building in a postcard okay. view. Oh, that's nice. And uh, here, this is uh, people getting off on the St. Paul Loop, and this kind of gives you a good look at the entrance building. Yeah, you really couldn't call it a station. It was really the entrance to the fair. And by the way, I got a lot of, I got a lot of pictures, not all of them, but a fair number of them. Uh, I did a photo swap with the State Fair Museum, and um, I'll show you some of those. Okay, so here's a pretty early view. Now, they always had an office car here, and here the office car is a single trucker. Uh, this is because of, uh, and you can see there's actually a single trucker in service over here. So this will be probably about mm, 1905, 06 or so. Um, here's a wire car, here's work car number one, which was a very early work car. Now, one of the things that's interesting, you'll notice here and here are step boxes. And in order to load and unload quicker, they, they, had, they allowed people to go through the motorman's door and use the step box, they'd ease it up to the car. Now, the office car, and you'll see this later, you'll notice it's not sitting on, there's no track leading to it. And this has been one of uh, the little, as far as I can tell, what they did is they brought it in and they laid down some, some of their portable snap track on it and then took the track away. Uh, uh, and I think I've got some photo proof of that later, but it's uh, one of those puzzling things. Here you looks see like, another pair of the step boxes to unload people from the Minneapolis loop. Looks like the uh, office car doesn't have a trolley pole either. No, you're right, it doesn't. Good point. Double, is that I, a double ender? Those... Bill, I couldn't hear you. Is that a double ender? It looks like it's got a retriever right here. Uh, the if you're talking about the, this one, yeah, the single truck cars. A lot of them do were double enders. No, this is a double truck car, and it's just. Uh... I don't, you can't see my cursor. Oh, anyway, never mind. Is it this one here? No, the one uh, to the left of it. That one. Oh, well, I, I do not see a trolley pole on the front. Yeah, those trolley poles look like they're at a fairly high angle, like like the wire was really high above the the, the car. Is that normal or is that what, what they ran in those times? I do not know. Good question. Because it 
you know, it seems higher than than uh, what we run currently. Yeah, it does look, but I, I can't answer your question. So uh, we have a uh, several views. Uh, th this is one here. You see the streetcar yard, and what's kind of interesting on these, and I don't know really which one is older than the other. The, the, whoops, there were a fair number of tents uh, set up where there are now. And here you see the, the grandstand ramp. So the photographer's up in the grandstand, and you can see this whole thing came further into the fairgrounds than it did in later years, because it comes all the way to the base of the grandstand ramp. So later on, they shortened this loop, of this terminal. Here's another view, and we're right above the ramp to the grandstand. And here's another one. Look at all these tents. This is the Duke of Parma here. I don't know what that is. And once again, here's here's the yard out here. Here's that streetcar station. This is another, uh, um, we serve Moss's famous coffee at this dining hall. Looks like a carousel and a whole bunch of tents. I like this. Egyptian Temple of Palmistry, fortunes told. And Cora Beckworth, is she a woman or a fish? <laughs> Interesting couple of choices. Yes. <laughs> I wonder what her personal pronoun would be. <laughs> <laughs> Miss <laughs> pronoun. Okay. <laughs> Uh, these are all from the State Fair Museum collection. Um, here you have like a really tall guy and a really short guy. Rheumatism, these people handle your rheumatism. And she is here, whoever she is. And so here then they put a, this, you can see this is probably about 1915 or so by the automobiles. And they put a big uh, square out here. And here you are right in front of the uh, streetcar thing. You see cars to St. Paul. Pure oil company on the truck. No one without a hat. But quite a variety of hats. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, now we move kind of into the modern era. So here's a car coming in from Minneapolis with a fairground sign. Here's a switchman out here. Mm -hmm. And here you, whoops, come on now. I don't know why it does that. And uh, here's, a, here's a track uh, headed into the gravel pit with some sort of chaotic parking along the side. <laughs> now, there was a gate down here at the Snelling and Como uh, corner. So here you have a, a car, it's uh, about to cross Snelling Avenue. Look how close that is the car is too. And here's a full load coming into the fairgrounds. Bob Schumacher took this photo. It's a nice photo. And beautiful cows. <laughs> <clears throat> And so here's that track, that ready track I was telling you about. But this is the office car. And so the track heads back in here, and the office car is on this isolated track. And here you see, of course, the State Fair Arch. And um, I ran this as a cover shot on Twin City Lines. You see the top of the loop here. <laughs> this, looks, this is like the late 1930s or so. St. Olaf Dining Hall. Uh -huh. And here's another view. This is all from the top of the Hippodrome. And this is car 1136 here, which of course was the office car for many years. And some people getting off in anticipation of going to the fair. And here is the view from inside the arch. Now I got a series of views here on the office car. 
And so the first office car, now they actually got two of them here, but this is one of the old Woodies. And um, you can see there's a couple of supervisor guys inside. Here they are. Now here's 1136. And uh, this is this car was distinctive because this served for many years as the State Fair office car. And it was the last car in its original configuration with the double stream rear gates and instead of triple stream and a motorman's door. And so this is, we've used the photo evidence of this as our model for the backdating of 1239. Now, if you look behind here, this looks like stamp track right here. You know, the one of their portable track sections. And here's a couple of guys inside that are working the phones. And later they replaced it with 1269. And here, the, here's how I, I can prove there's no track. I mean, you can see there's no track behind this. Now, if you look carefully over here, this is the track from the siding that's going back in. So it was very grassy, but no track behind. However, off to the side here, here sits us the section of snap track. And so why they didn't just have a siding, why they went through the trouble of doing this every year, I have no idea, but they did. Okay, here's the big waiting shed on the west side of the uh, Minneapolis Loop. Cars to Minneapolis, you see. So apparently they weren't cars to St. Paul, it was just Minneapolis. This is 1943 on that photo. Well, come on. And uh, here we are with the shed again, looking across the loop. And uh, here, because the sidings end here, the, this area has been turned into auto parking. And here's another view of the shed. And, uh, oh, this is a flat car for loading uh, some of the Royal American Show stuff. And here's 1300 in the very, very last year of the fair, uh, 1953. Oh. I used this as a cover shot when we did the 1300 centennial issue. And so then <laughs> 53 was the last year of service to the fair. Uh, they had abandoned the St. Paul stuff yeah. in 52. So this is 53 with buses. And of course the tracks are still there, but they're running buses to St. Paul. And here you see the, it's the same lettering up there on the grandstand. Okay, now, <clears throat> this is the last three photos here. I found these at Minnesota Historical Society, and these were taken because in 1948, the American Freedom Train made a stop here. And it carried copies, either cop I don't think the originals, but copies of the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and people came. If you look down here, this is a line a block long waiting to get in and tour this thing. Mm. And uh, here's a here's a Como Harriet Street car. Oh, oh. That train. <laughs> and and here's the fairgrounds loops. But what's distinctive is the these pictures are the only views we have of the gravel pit. And if you can see the tr the track left here, and it's very hard to see, but it's circled around. And here you can see the end of end of the track. And you go out here today, and this is just a parking lot. It's been filled in. But you can see that they, it's, there's a pit there and the groundwater has filled in. So this is where they got ballast and gravel for the streetcar system. They had another one of these nor in Northeast Johnson Street and another one in South St. Paul. And so here uh, you can see the gravel pit spur and uh, there's a switch here. So they, the, one of the spurs of the gravel put one here and the other one you can see it turn in the corner and looping around the south side of the property. And then, of course, here's the waiting shed to go to Minneapolis. And then finally, here's the line. And once again, you can see the Y track to go into the gravel pit right there. Um, and so here is the State Fair arch as it was. It was orange back then. And so, of course, it went to the back of the property. It was forgotten for decades. But then when the new bus terminal was built in the opposite side of the fairgrounds, here it is now. And I think that's just a wonderful thing.